of scissors is made up of two levers with a pivot in the middle. Notice how easy it is to cut when the card is near the pivot and how difficult it can be when you're cutting with only the tips. Notice also how far my fingers move when it's easy to cut and how far they move when it's difficult. Easy, difficult. There are all sorts of levers all around us. In fact, it would be very difficult to manage in this television studio if it wasn't for the levers. From the very smallest lever, a switch lever on the television camera, to the very biggest lever we have. And it's here, with a television camera actually on the end of it. The camera, operated by Paul, is at one end of the lever. In the middle is a pivot. And at the other end of the lever here, we have Richard, with a very heavy weight, which balances the camera and the cameraman at the other end. At the back here is the driver, Steve. And he uses levers to make the machine move. Right, let's see what they can do. Richard raises the weights at this end of the lever, the lever pivots, and the camera comes down. And when Richard lowers the weights, the lever pivots once more, and the camera goes up. No, you're not seeing things. Simon and Andrew are identical twins. And they're using a lever, in this case, a seesaw. Now, because they're both roughly the same weight, they can work the seesaw very well. But if I'm to swap places with Simon, let's see what happens. Right, you get off, and I'll get on. I go all the way down, and Andrew goes all the way up, because he's not heavy enough on his own to lift me. Right. You pop on, and we'll see what happens when both of you are on. We can just about manage. Now, I want both of you to get off, and Andrew, you try and lift me up with one hand. No good? No. Well, 
I'll move a bit nearer to the pivot. Now try. Nope. I'll move right up to the pivot then this time. Now try. Oh, yes. He can manage it quite easily. Now, I'll move halfway back here again. And both of you try. Just about manage it, eh? And now, both of you on, and I'll sit at the end here. You're not doing very well, are you, Simon? I'll tell you what, I'll give you a hand. Let's try this. You come down this end. That's easier, isn't it? <laughs> try again. Notice how far this end of the lever moves. And notice how far that end of the lever moves. We've marked it so that you can see it. Once more. <coughs> Thank you, Simon. Levers help us to do things. They help to make difficult jobs much more easy. And they come in all shapes and sizes. This is a lever. Now, I know it doesn't look much like a lever, but it is. The bottom of the skip, this is a skip. The bottom of the skip is the lever. And the sides are just built up to stop the rubbish falling out. Now, where we have a lever, we expect to see a pivot. And here it is, at the front of the machine here. So, we have a pivot, and we have a lever. And we expect something that will move the lever. In this case, to lift it up. Well. I can't lift it up. Even when it's empty, it's much too heavy. So let's see how it is lifted up. Right. Now you can hear what I'm saying. We have a ram to do the lifting. Right. Down again. So we have a lever here, a pivot at the front end of the machine, and a ram to do the lifting. All machines use levers. And the bigger the machine, the bigger the levers.
big machines like this one depend on simple levers. There are 10 tons of stones for road making in each bucket full. In the cab, the driver uses levers. Look carefully at the levers. See how they move. Look for the pivot and for the rams that push and pull them. tons of stone in the skip are carried by the dumper truck to the crusher. The skip is a giant lever. There are the rams pushing up 40 tons of stone and the weight of the skip. And there's the pivot. This is a face shovel. This machine, believe it or not, is known as a concrete nibbler. It's not a monster. It's not even a big machine. It's a model. It's a model of a machine that's used mainly to dig great big trenches, and it's made up of levers. Here's one lever here, and there's the ram that moves it. Here's another lever, and there's the ram that moves it. And there's the pivot for this lever. At this end is the bucket that digs up the earth, and that's a lever too. There's the pivot, and there's the ram that moves it. Engineers use models to try out their ideas. Here's another model. You may very well have seen one of these machines in real life. They're used mainly for cleaning street lamps. Here's a lever, and at the bottom is a pivot. The other end is another pivot. And on top, there's another lever. And each lever has a ram that moves it. Let's see it in action. First the bottom one. The ram pushes up the lever. And now the top one. 
notice that the ram only moves a very short way, while the man at the other end of the lever moves a very long way indeed. And now we let him down again. Models like this are very useful to engineers. They use them to make sure that their ideas work. After all, it's safe to make a mistake on a model, but not on the real thing. Scientists always check their work first. It can save a lot of headaches. This is a model of a war machine invented by a Greek engineer called Archimedes about 2,000 years ago. Now, almost certainly he would have built a model like this first to make sure that the stone went where he wanted it to go. It's a very simple machine, really. There's a lever here with a bucket at the end of it, and there's a pivot. You wind it up. I'll just wind it up. There we are. Place the stone in the bucket, and off she goes. And here's another machine invented by Archimedes. This war machine also used a lever. There's the lever, and there's the pivot. On that end of the lever, they tied a very, very heavy stone. And that pulled the lever down. Hanging from the end of it was a rope with a very large hook on it. Now, this hook used to hook into the enemy's boats. And then at this end of the lever here, four men were able to pull on this rope and lift the boat up like that and smash it on the rocks. Thank you. 